Welcome back yet again. Today, we are going to take a look at some of the wars that were occurring in the American colonies and actually all around the world during the days of the Puritans, during the days of the colonies leading up to the War of Independence. Now, one of these wars you're probably familiar with, and that is the French and Indian War. And we could, of course, take our entire lesson for this week and just discuss the French and Indian War. But if we did that, we really would miss the larger picture about what was occurring at this time. Now, before we get into this, let's go back and just kind of remember where we've covered. We've talked a lot this year already about the parish settlement colonies, those colonies that were founded as new homes. We've talked about the Puritans, who actually very specifically thought of the New World as an opportunity. They thought of it as a new home. They thought of it as an opportunity for things like community and family and education, their various values. So we see that this land and this opportunity was something that was very dear to them. It was something that they wanted to protect at all costs. And so when we take a look at today's topic and at the topic we're going to be covering this week, which are these wars of control. In fact, you want to write that down. Because these wars of control that led up to and included the French and Indian War really gave the colonists a taste of what they did not want, of exactly what they wanted to avoid. In fact, the title for this week's lesson is called A Foreign War at Home. That's because here in the colonies where these various conflicts were engaged, these conflicts that often involved nations like France and England, or nations like Spain and Portugal or the Germanies and the various powerhouses of Europe, all of these conflicts that were fought over here were typically fought for reasons that most of the colonists did not really care about that deeply. Sure, when the war was fought near them and it affected the people around them, or people around them died in these conflicts, they cared about that. But in terms of why the war was started, or in terms of some kind of larger picture of justice, or just larger picture of, we want to control this land for our nation, the American colonists didn't really care about that, because after all, they had left Europe to avoid those kinds of wars. And so when we look at these conflicts, we need to keep that in mind. Now, let me paint a picture for you of where these battles were fought. When you look at these various wars, such as the French and Indian War, you'll notice that a lot of the battles were fought out in places such as the Midwest, or places such as Northeast, or Canada. But what you may not realize is that back when these battles were occurred, or when they were fought, there really were hardly any people living in those areas. In fact, the armies had to pass through wilderness often for days, weeks, or even months, just to have a shot at being able to fire at the other guy. And so quite often, these armies would go into the wilderness, and several of the guys would die just because they were traveling through a place that had no civilization, a place where you could not reliably get food and water, or shelter for that matter, and you might even have natives attack you or ambush you while you were on your way. Now, James and Mark Cooper, who wrote The Last of the Mohicans, actually writes about this at the very beginning of that novel. In fact, let me read to you now a section from this. He says this, It was a feature peculiar to the colonial wars of North America, that the toils and dangers of the wilderness were to be encountered before the adverse host could meet. A wide and apparently an impervious boundary of forest severed the possessions of the hostile provinces of France and England. The hardy colonist and the trained European who fought at his side frequently expended months in struggling against the rapids of the streams or in affecting the rugged passes of the mountains in quest of an opportunity to exhibit their courage in a more martial conflict. But emulating the patience and self-denial of the practiced native warriors, they learned to overcome every difficulty. And it would seem that in time there was no recess of the woods so dark nor any secret place so lovely that it might claim exception from the inroads of those who had pledged their blood to satiate their vengeance, or to uphold the cold and selfish policy of the distant monarchs of Europe. 
In other words, these wars were foreign because they were being fought by distant monarchs or distant rulers. And these wars, as Cooper notes, were being fought often out of vengeance. Basically, if France harmed England, England wanted vengeance for that. If France felt offended by England, then France wanted vengeance for their wrong that they felt. And so this war was a war that was often insane because it had no goal beyond making the other guy suffer or beyond making certain the other guy did not have too much power. That's why, for example, the Battle of Quebec, which was fought during the French Indian War, it's also called the Battle of the Plains of Abraham. That's why, for example, and this is the principle, I want you to note this quote, that's why John Richard Green said this about the conflict. He said, with the triumph of Wolfe, who was the British commander, on the heights of Abraham began the history of the United States. In other words, the United States began during the French Indian War because it proved to the colonists in the various colonies of the eastern seaboard or eastern United States what would become the U.S., it proved to them that they had no future with Britain. They had no future with France or a future with any of these nations that were willing to duke it out over these lands. In fact, the French general during the same conflict, the French Indian War, a man by the name of Marquis Montcalm, he said that whoever wins the war would lose the continent. He recognized that whoever would win this engagement, whether it be France or England, would eventually lose the entire continent to their own colonists. In other words, if we want to understand what happened at the Declaration of Independence, if we want to understand what happened in that year of 1776, we have to go back to the root. We have to go back to what occurred before this and see exactly what it is the colonists wanted to escape from. They didn't like the idea of the state telling them what to do in all matters. They didn't like the idea of going to war simply to gain territory or simply to inflict revenge on the other guy. Because after all, most of these colonists had come over here to establish new homes, to actually establish parish settlements. They wanted independence. They wanted to rule over themselves. They wanted to be able to worship freely in a manner that they thought was actually true. And so these wars of control, these wars that brought all of the craziness of Europe close to the Americans was something they desperately wanted to be free from and was one of the significant things behind the Declaration of Independence in 1776.